Um, if you can, again, just say hello and let me know if you're in here. Um, usually we have some graduates from the programs and current students watching. And if you are um, new, I'd be also be curious to know if you've already looked at the brochure. Um, so let me know about that. And um, I am going to, uh, before I start with the questions, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about why, how did this program evolve? This was a program that created, I have a passion for canine fitness. It started when my own dog got injured. Um, but basically what I saw out there was, um, I, my passion is sport and working dogs. And I saw that there was a need um, conditioning a sport and working dog and, and the demands of things that a sport and working dog has to do. To, to reach peak performance is very different from say uh, a, a pet dog that's a lower drive uh, a, a lower drive dog but we also get a lot of pet dogs that really should have jobs and that should be out there doing you know really expending energy and so also you know dealing with these high energy family pets um, they do have some similar needs to these dogs that are our sport and working dogs not the same because sport and working dogs have unique jobs and activities they have to do. But um, the first thing pe sometimes people ask me is, does this relate to pet dogs? Most definitely. But I did want to give you a heads up. My passion is the sport and working dogs, those high drive dogs. And so throughout the program, I give examples, um, frequently coming from different sports and, and, and jobs. And one of the things that I saw is there, there's a need to help educate people and how we can keep these dogs fit injury free and help them reach peak performance. How do we design fitness programs for them? How do we push them so they get stronger and faster and more agile, but we don't wanna push them so far that they end up getting injured. And it's a fine line building these programs and helping our dogs, but we don't wanna overdo it. And how do we know how much to support and encourage them and when to back off? So um, in addition to that, there's a couple other things through the program you learn about canine fitness, you learn about designing programs. You learn about designing programs that are specific for the individual dog. So if I look at an individual dog, like my two Malinois are structured completely different. They're very, very different dogs structurally. And they have different physical strengths and weaknesses. So I'm going to build programs based on their physical strengths and weaknesses. But I'm also going to build a program based on the demands of what they have to do. If they're doing ring sport, protection sports, detection work, if they're doing agility. And so these are the types of things we do in the program. When you come out, a person who is certified as a, as a, as a specialist in working with these types of dogs, you know how to pre-assess, you can look at what their needs are, you can look at their, their structural strengths and weaknesses, you can determine based on the job and the work, the sports that they do, what they need to be developing, what you need to focus on, and developing safe programs for these dogs. Now, in addition to this, this is something really important because it makes the program stand out, um, and it's unique in what I brought into the program, is I have a background, I have a PhD in education, and my expertise is not just teaching and learning, but also educational technology. So teaching online and helping you, this is an online program. So I really look and emphasize on the learner's experience. But what I found was when I first developed the program and was talking to a lot of people, I thought I was going to get a lot of just like sport people and competitive people. But I also got a lot of business owners who wanted to bring the canine fitness to other people, to their clients. I had people in foundations, nonprofit foundations who wanted to bring it to their organizations. I had search and rescue team members who wanted to bring it to their teams. And so I brought my educational background and people in the program, I teach you how to take your knowledge of canine fitness and how you can design very educational programs, thinking of the learner's experience. So that's my background in education also to help that learner have the best possible learner experience. Uh, it could be through a, a six to eight week course you're developing. It could be through a seminar that you develop. And the idea is that you learn about canine fitness but you also know how to communicate the importance of it and educate others. And then in addition to that, when I have a lot of business owners come to me, they're like, okay, I wanna help others, but how do I market this program? How do I get it out? Um, how do I sell it to pet dog people? How do I sell it to working dog people? It's, you're going to be, your marketing and, and your audiences, you're, it's going to be a very different approach. So it's a very kind of um, a holistic program in the, in the you look at the canine fitness side, 
you look at teaching and learning, not just of the dog, but the handler, and then also educating others. And then there's also that whole aspect of being an advocate for canine fitness. And how do you get the word out? How do you help people recognize that this is so, something important? This is something significant. And it's something that could be very, very valuable for them and their dogs. Um, and so, so that's kind of what the program encompasses is it's, it has a couple, it's my most comprehensive program and the focus is not just the fitness. It's really helping you to take that help your dog, but also how to help others, whether, like I said, whether it's with your, your club, your team, or if you actually have a business or you want to have a business and bring on clients. Um, so that is, um, just a short little story on how how it evolved and um i'm still looking in here so again if you have any um if some of you i'm going to go through some questions that were sent to me and very popular questions that come up but also if you um use the the, the discussion thread you can post questions there um i will give you a heads up sometimes the questions come up slow for me so if i miss your question I will go back and I'll, I'll post it and I will also privately message you if I happen to miss your question. Okay. Um, and I do have, we do have uh, two graduates in the program here. Um, and I'm going to see, uh, I'm not exactly sure if I'm going to be able, the technology might not be working. Kate, I'm going to see if I can get you up here. Um, but it, there we go. Uh, ah, we got you on. I'm just like clicking. I didn't know. So, um, Kate, Kate I can hear you. And uh, Stephanie, say hello so we can see if we can hear you too. It should, it should be okay, okay now, I think. Ah, it's working. All right, you guys. So, you know, I don't want to mess around with the technology too much. You guys are here, so I'm going to keep you on here. <laughs> um, and, you know, actually, you guys can kind of help maybe with some of the questions because... <laughs> Maybe the way you answer it won't be the same way I answer it. <laughs> um, but uh, just so you guys know, um, uh, Kate, go ahead and wave so they know which one. Of, which one? Of, there's Kate and Stephanie. Um, Stephanie, um, they both are graduates from the program. And you know what? Why don't we just start? Why don't you let them know? Um, we'll start with Kate. Um, maybe what what made you interested? Why did you sign up for the program? So I. Uh, Started started doing doing it. Can you hear me up here? I'm getting feedback. It's kind of it's going in and out a little bit. Hang on. Let me. Why don't you let Stephanie talk and I'm going to grab my headphones. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> Stephanie, go ahead. Um, in terms of why we start, so I had, I think Erica had known, I'd known Erica off and on through the Malinois world for quite some time. Um, I'm an active IPO and detection trainer, and we were looking at something, I wanted something a little more concrete. So I kind of had some ideas of dealing with dogs just from my own training background, but I didn't feel like I had a set structure to things. And so I wanted to really get into a little bit more of the science behind things and come up with a better balanced program for my dogs. Um, and to be able to help students and, and club members as well doing that and begin to offer sports specific fitness, uh, particularly for my detection students, because it's not something that's available um, out there generally. Yeah. And that's a good point, because um, that's another thing about the program is we really look at the whole the whole balanced approach. Um, you know, we, we look at cardio, we look at aerobic, anaerobic, strength training, flexibility. We look at using equipment. We look at using doing exercise without equipment. Right. Um, so it's it's um, it's that whole focus. I'm going to see um, Kate. Let me see if I can get you back up now. Go ahead and try again, Kate. Can you hear me? OK. Uh huh. Yeah. And I don't hear any feedback, but I have these on. So so I was. I started doing agility. I'd never done agility with my any of my dogs before. And I started doing agility. And I thought, there's got to be a way to get him in shape for this. Even though he was pretty fit, he was a young dog. And I wasn't sure what to do. So I started researching on the internet. And I saw something from you, Erica. So I, I got a free little blurb, whatever you had given out at the time. And I read through it. And I thought, wow, this lady knows what she's talking about. And so I I looked into your program and I had looked into other programs and you were great. You, you know, I sent you an email asking you a question. You called me right back. You explained to me in detail everything about the program. And so I signed up and no regrets. It was wonderful. I really, really enjoyed it. 
And um, um, yeah, you were going to say something else? It just, it covered, as you said, it covered so many aspects. And as a retired veterinary technician, I was really impressed that you covered muscles and body structure and um, how to read your dog and just different things that I didn't expect to get out of that course that were there. Even though I had a lot of this knowledge beforehand, it was nice to see that you presented it because not everybody that takes this program is a vet tech. So I thought it was really nice that you you cover the aspects for the, the professional as well as someone that really was just starting out. Yeah. And um, and I'm glad you mentioned about kind of the personal, um, you know, the feedback I was giving you, because mm -hmm. when people ask me about my course, I say it's it's not a course and I don't even think of it as like a program. Mm -hmm. um, it covers six months. You get online access to the foundational canine conditioning 101 and you get um, access to the online content, the elite canine athlete um, course. But in addition mm -hmm. to that, we do biweekly group coaching calls where we all get, we get together. I record it. You can, you know, if you can't make it live um, and every single student, every single student gets one on one coaching with me. And so and this, you know, you get ongoing support when we have a Facebook group, you know, you can send emails. And I really think of it. I don't know if you two would agree, but I, I think of it as like a six month, like a mentoring program that you get the online content. But like you have me there with you for the entire time. And, you know, I don't know any other program out there that that's comp that has that kind of level of support for such amount of time. Um, you, you also get the other students within that, right? And that makes a big difference having a wide variety of backgrounds to pull from. There's different things that people would think of that didn't even enter into my head to ask until somebody else brought it up. Yeah, so our fa we have a, fr a private Facebook group for the elite canine athlete um, students, but when they graduate, um, they stay in because, um, you know, Kate and Stephanie have graduated, but they're still in that Facebook group because I want that wealth of information. I want that expertise in the group. So we have new people, we have experienced people, we have people that have very successful businesses with all, you know, all kinds of dog trainers working underneath them to people who have no business, to people just starting up. We have search and rescue. We have police canine handlers. We have people with military background. We have people who do dock diving, agility, obedience, mushing. Um, we got like everything. I, I mean, I can't think of, I mean, I'm sure there's sports we don't have, but um, I, I can't really think that we've got all of that in there. And um, it's, it's just great, that community. So uh, I really, uh, again, that's the kind of, that's the education, the, the educator in me is I don't, it's not a course where I just throw out content and you're just this passive learner. You know, I'm an educator at heart. I'm not a, you know, I'm a business person, but like my brain is an educator. And so when I design the program, when I put you guys together, I really want to have that environment that's going to be supportive of you. Um, and uh, some of the things, I'm looking at some of the questions, um, the, 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 um, the the length of time this is something i'll be curious what you guys say i'm like oh i should have asked you this ahead of time people ask me um i'll tell you what i i respond and then you two tell me if you agree <laughs> um people ask me um about how long is the program and what's the time commitment um and i tell them because you have six months to complete it i tell people that if they do a little bit every week you know if it's just a couple hours every week they'll be able to finish in six months if I find that if somebody just puts it aside and does nothing for like, you know, four weeks, that could be an issue. But if you, it's not like you have to put hours and hours and hours every week. Um, it's, it's a couple hours each week. But if you just keep at it, um, doing it within that time frame is, is doable. And I don't know. Would People work differently. Some people like to do a whole bunch all at once. I'm not sure how Stephanie and Kate, how you worked through it or, or you know, different people have different styles and how they like to go through the program. But do you want to share a little bit about um, your time commitment and how you balanced it? For me, it was, I tended to do a little bit more at a time, but fewer days a week, only because of the way my schedule works, that was the easiest. Um, it wasn't, it certainly wasn't something that you could do in a half hour, but it wasn't something that I needed to do 40 hours a week on either. I mean, there's just, I manage a kennel with 15 to 20 uh, Malinois, my own business, my, it just, you get time commitment, um, is not it's already a full-time job so you can't add on something to that and i was still able to complete it well 
uh, relatively easily within those six months. And you, and it is, um, I take people, I only offer it twice a year because of six months, I like to get those people through and you get a lot of one-on-one -on -one support. So I can only handle so many people. So I like to get a group of people through, have them almost fat, you know, graduated. And then I bring in the next group. So because of that, I only offer it, um, twice a year. And, um, and Kate, do you want to share kind of what your experience was as far as the time commitment? And you get out of it what you put into it. That's the best way to say it. Um, I started out a little slow and I thought, what am I doing? I really am enjoying this. I need to spend more time doing this. So then I would allot time each week. You know, I'd schedule it in just like anything else. Um, busy people have to do that. But I started to schedule it in and it was so much better doing it that way. And I just, on a, a side note here, when Eric and I first were talking about me joining the course, I liked the fact that she had a PhD in education. I liked that you were a teacher. I mean, it was great that you had dogs that you do, you know, Schutzen and, and that with a French ring. Sorry, I'm, I'm confusing <laughs> my words, but you know what I mean. It was nice that you had sporting dogs. It was nice that you had dogs and were really into the fitness part of them, but it was also nice that you knew how to teach. That's what I really liked. I mean, Anyone can give you a bunch of information, but it was nice that you're you're a teacher. And so you know what works and what doesn't as far as teaching people go. So that was one thing that I really liked about the class. It was set up well. Yeah. And, and I, when I designed the program, I also, you know, um, because when you're doing an online program, you, you have to have a lot of self-initiative. It's harder if you don't have to be at a facility and be at a building at a certain time, a certain day. And so there are different things that I build into the program to help motivate and help people go through um, from the group, the group coaching sessions to the one on one to individualized messages and things just to encourage. It's, it's not like you, you just disappear. Like you're very aware that, you know, that there is an instructor. <laughs> I, I know some some students sometimes at the university will sign up for an online class and they're like, I never see those instructors. Like there's nobody there. <laughs> um, and um, the, the benefits um, usually to help people understand understand what you get coming out of the program is um, to become certified. You can go through the program and not be certified. You do the same types of things. But if you're going to be certified, as you go through the different modules, um, everything's very is designed to be very um, applicable, uh, real world. You, you learn something, you go observe your dog. You learn something, you go develop a fitness program. And, and it's not like you just study for months and take a big multiple choice test. And so um, for the certification, if you want to do certification, as you go through each module, there's different things that you complete where you practice and implement the things you're learning. And then that's what you submit for review. And if you don't do the certification, you go through all the same thing. You just you can share it with me if you want, but it's not required to go through the review process. And so some of the things that come out is, for example, when you learn about how to do a structural analysis of a dog and look at the strengths and the weaknesses, You'll have videos and you'll do that. You'll, you'll do a structural analysis. You'll do a gait analysis. You'll do that assessment and do some initial exercises and stretching and seeing how the dog does and then, you know, kind of critiquing that dog and what do we need to work on. When you learn about how to design a fitness program, um, you develop a week-long fitness program. When you learn about how to teach others, you'll actually go and teach somebody and you'll write up like your your instructional plan and you'll do a videotape where I can see you working with somebody and, and so I can see how you communicate and how you interact with the dog and uh, with the handler. And, and I teach you this and I give you instruction and feedback, not just on the fitness, but um, how to structure those seminars, how to structure a class to best communicate to those people. And um, and I'll ask Stephanie and, and Kate kind of from those things that they created. I know for some students, when they um, some of them, when they created their instructional plan, that was like that. That was one of the first things they went out and implemented and actually got like paid clients. Um, it, when I have people create things in the program, I tell them, if you're going to create an instructional plan or a fitness plan or if you're going to create um, a, a seminar, I want you to develop something that you can actually go out and use. Mm -hmm. And um, and like I said, some of the people like they get they take what they create in the program and I help teach them also that how do you get your audience? How do you sell it or market it? Um, how do you recruit people to come do a, a, you know, a free workshop? And uh, and th those very things I have a number of students that they actually take that and they go out and they implement it. And some of them 
I have one person, um, she, um, she's in charge of like a, a lot of service dog organizations. She gives service dog seminars and she designed canine fitness in her seminar for service dogs and she actually implemented it and used it. Um, and then uh, Kate, do you want to share a little bit of, you know, some of the outcomes of what came out of the program and how you've seen that afterwards? So, so we, we have to, to again, can you hear me okay? okay? Mm -hmm. So when I went and you had us um, make like a, I can't think of the name of it now. Um, so when people want to sign up for your program or sign up for your class, uh, there's a whole intake. That's the word. Oh, sorry, brain did. It's Friday. The, the whole intake form. I actually implement that now for my group classes. I mean, if you go to my website and you click on um, family dog fitness class or a fitness class for agility dogs, if you click on, you know, um, book now or purchase this now, it takes you right to the page. And there's the whole intake form that I used that I created through your program. So that was great. It was, it was really nice that it's already in place. I didn't have to do that when I started uh, my business. Um, as far as the exercise plan, I use that for my dog now, my agility dog. I use that exercise plan. I mean, we tweak it now and then. We change things up. But I use that as a basis for his fitness program each week. And it was just nice to have those two things in place. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I didn't even think about it, but that intake, you um, you know, when you first get a dog coming to you, you got to do that kind of evaluation, the questions, and uh, mm -hmm. observe that dog. Um, and I actually go through, you know, what do you want on the form? What kind of questions do you want to ask the owner? What kind of information do you want to document? What, what do you need? What information do you need in order to start from ground zero and decide, okay, I just got this dog coming to me. You know, maybe it's your own dog. But where do you start? Where do you start your fitness plan? So it's all that information you want to get from the beginning. And that is something that you create in the program that I teach you and, and give you tips on how to create that, what to put on it. Um, Stephanie, do you want to add anything? Uh, as far as like things that we're still using. So the, for me, the instructional plan was a seminar on fitness for, for detection. And it's actually we've run it twice now. Um, and the, pro, the plan is to take that and hopefully turn it as well into an online version because we have... Um, quite a bit from the pet um, sports detection type uh, people that are really interested but are just way too far away to actually attend one so that's kind of our next um, step with that and that was something that was done directly as one of the assignments awesome i didn't know you'd actually implement it twice so yeah. that's cool yeah yeah and and so when people are doing it for example um if they want to you know it's maybe your main focus is detection work maybe your main focus i have kevin his main focus was um hunting dogs mm -hmm. and so it wasn't like he had to you know i want you to use it i want it to be usable so he developed a plan you know doing fitness with the hunting dogs and stephanie had the detection dogs and she integrated the fitness with the detection dogs so it, it really um like i said i really want it and i designed it so that you can actually you know apply and use the things that you create um, and I'm looking at a couple other questions here because I think I'm, I'm just through our conversation, we're answering a lot of them. Um, how the benefits, um, oh, the, you know, the, can you use it for pet dogs? Um, I think Kate mentioned the science. Yes. Um, we talk about like exercise science and, and, and the science behind how do you design a program? It's not just, you know, what I think I'm going to do for the program, but when we look at how many days per week, what kinds of exercises, how many repetitions, how frequently we do look at um, exercise science and what we know in some of the research out there on humans, on horses, on dogs to help educate us. And, um, and so no matter if you have pet dogs, working dogs or sport dogs, that knowledge helps you in all those areas. Um, the other thing uh, that um, some people asked, and it was in the, um, uh, in the brochure, if you looked at it, was it talked about the certified canine athlete specialist and the certified canine athlete advisor. And what is the difference? And on the screen, I'm just going to put, um, if you can see, this is the brochure. It's, it's a shortened URL, um, tinyurl.com slash canine fit. Um, if you want to download the brochure, but I also put a link to it. Um, and um, let's see, let me scroll down here. Yeah. Um, and so the difference is I had some people come to me and they were very interested, but they didn't have the sport and working dog background. And so I said, yes, of course, you can still take the program. Um, 
But what I did is if you come in, this is based on not the program, it's the exact same program you go through, but it depends on your background. So if you come to the program and you have at least two years experience working with or training or competing with sport or working dogs, then you qualify for the certified canine athlete specialist. And then if you come in and maybe most your work is with um, pet dogs, or maybe you've only been working with a, 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 a doing a sport for maybe a year, you would be, have the certified canine athlete advisor. But once you get two years experience in the sport or working dog world, you can always then um, apply to have that the certificate for the specialist. So the difference, it's you do the exact same thing, you learn the exact same thing. It's just what your background experience is when you come to the program. Um, and so, like I said, I did it because I really want it, you know, you really can apply it across the board, whether it's pet dogs, senior dogs, you know, all the way up. Mm -hmm. And then also another thing is a lot of times when people come to me and they want to do the program, it's, you know, you know, you come out with advanced knowledge, you come out, you can educate others, but people come in and if they don't have any formal background knowledge, what I did was I added Canine Conditioning 101, which is a foundational course as a free bonus um, is what I added. So um, uh, so if you're coming in and oh, and with that said, I also have people that come who are already certified. Um, you know, maybe they're a certified canine fitness trainer, um, K, uh, veterinary technician. I have people with, you know, um, more advanced background in this in similar areas and they'll still take the program because of the emphasis and the sport in the working dogs and also because of the teaching, learning and business side of the program. Um, so these are things that make it unique. So um, Kate and Stephanie, did you want to add anything about, um, you know, what you got out of the program or, um, you know, how it impacted you or your dogs or your business? I think the think biggest, biggest thing for me was the versatility of it. So we can, we can apply, apply it to almost any type of dog. dog the versatility and how you completed it. it. Um, so for me, I think I went through almost all of the videos before I ever did um, one of the certification assignments, just because of the way my schedule was and when I needed to work with other people, it gets tricky. And it didn't it didn't end up then holding me back. Even if I wasn't able to really do assignments for a month and a half, and then did two in a week, it wasn't um, it wasn't an issue to do that way. Uh, and then of course being able to take it and like I said, working with my detection students versus the plans that I come up with, um, and I'm more <laughs> conscious of them now than I was with my own dogs. Mm -hmm. um, and certainly watching the variation in the balance, which I think a lot of programs that I had looked into prior had been either too equipment focused or too strength focused or too balance focused. There wasn't really the whole emphasis on all parts, including cardio, which is a big thing for what I do. So, awesome. thank you. Kate, did you want to add anything? Well, um, this doesn't have to do with this program, but I was so happy with your program that I actually did another one of your programs um, because I just, I enjoyed it so much. I enjoyed the structure. I enjoyed how you taught, and of course the content was great. So I, I did do another course with you, Erica, and I was very pleased with that one too. But also I had gone on and done a different training course afterwards. And I think going through your course first really, really helped me get through the second course. It just gave me such a, a wonderful base and, and such a good education. And I just feel very well-rounded now. Um, like today, we had our agility class today, and we've started at a new agility facility. And so I am out there, and I'm warming my dog up. And this is only the second time we've been with this group of people. And so some lady said, what were you doing with your dog? So I explained it to her. And I was just so comfortable telling her about what I was doing with him and why I was doing it and the whole science. I mean, I got a little too geeked out, I think, for her <laughs> about the science of it. <laughs> You know, a, a couple of years ago, I couldn't have done that. So yeah. I, I just feel like I got a very good education and I'm I'm confident, I'm comfortable talking with anyone about this. Just like, you know, after I finished my vet tech degree, I felt very comfortable talking to people about animal medicine. Now I feel very comfortable talking with people about canine fitness, canine, fit, the, you know, the health benefits of it as well. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because I hadn't thought about that. But a lot of times when I talk with people about the program and they're interested in, in, in taking it and a number of times when people say one of the reasons they're interested is they're really interested in fitness, 
they have a feel for fitness, but they, they don't feel confident in, in knowing for sure if what they're doing is right. Mm -hmm. And they're not exactly sure, like, how do you explain it? Like, sometimes you just know, well, that's off, or maybe I don't want to do that, or that doesn't look mm -hmm. right. But they say, I don't, I don't quite know um, how to explain it or, and, or I don't feel confident. Like, mm -hmm. I, I think I have a sense, you know, I used to do sports myself or I used to do sports with horses. You know, I kind of have a feel, but I don't know exact, I don't know for sure if I'm right. Um, and I'm not super confident in how to explain it to others. So um, I'm glad you mentioned that because I just had that conversation over the past week with about two or three people who were interested and um, who signed up for the program. So um, so thanks for bringing that up. Now um, we're running, uh, I try to keep this to 30 minutes. Um, what um, There is a link in the thread to the application and to the brochure. Um, but also, um, if, if you, also, if you're watching the replay, if you can also just type me, you know, uh, let me know you're interested. I'll reach out to you. I'll personally send, uh, send you the brochure and the application. Um, but I do, um, before I go, and I know some people will watch the replay afterwards, but right now I'm in the midst of, I only have a couple spots left. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm, I'm actually doing a thousand dollar, a thousand dollars off as a pre-registration discount. Um, and it expires in just a couple days. And I do have some extra really nice um, bonuses uh, for business people. I have a couple different bonuses, um, some of them valued up to $1,600. Um, but I need to have people let me know right away if you're interested. And what I do is I interview people for those spots. I, I mean, I say interview, it's, it's, not, it's not a formal interview. It's like, I just like to have a conversation with you because sometimes people come and they they want to they think they're going to sign up for this program and I talk to them and I I find that a different program is better for them, or you know um, it, it's not. I like to make sure that it's the right fit. I, I don't want to sign up people just to sign up people, and so I do have different programs. I, you know, starting from a program at like hundred and fifty dollars, starting with um, canine uh, conditioning introduction. I do canine peak performance. Um, it's if you're more focused on just your dog, you're not really interested in working with other people or teaching. Um, that's around twelve hundred. Um, and for the elite canine athlete program, the price varies depending if, if you do the pre-registration. It depends on if you do certification or not. And there's also an option to um, upgrade to a VIP where you get one-on-one -on -one support. So the pricing there um, greatly varies. Uh, so I really, if you're interested, fill out the application or just you know indicate, say me, I'm interested, I'll contact you and we'll set up a time to chat right away. And um, like I said, uh, I just have a couple days left for the pre-registration discount where I'm taking $1,000 off. Uh, I have a couple different bonuses, especially if you're a business owner or you wanna start up a business, it's gonna be really valuable for you. And um, if you're watching the replay, if you're interested, message me right away. Sometimes I get openings in between sessions. Um, I always do some kind of pre-registration bonus. I can't say if it's always gonna be the same amount. Um, but the best thing that I can tell you is, if you're interested, is to reach out, You know, comment below, um, private message me, message me on Facebook, LinkedIn, You know, just get a hold of me here if it's your first time here. This is my name, <laughs> Erica Bolling, <laughs> and it's Northeast Canine Conditioning. And uh, like I said, if you're interested at all, if you have more questions, the best thing would be to just reach out and set up a quick time for us to chat um, so I can learn more about you, your interest in dogs, if you have a business, your business interest. Some people, um, I have a, a mastermind, a business mastermind program, and some people, that's that program's better for them than this program. But the only way we're really gonna know is if I can talk with you and get to get to know you, your interests, your needs, um, and, then I, and then I'll know exactly um, the best way that I can support you. Um, so that, uh, that is, uh, as we're wrapping up, if there's any questions, I'm just gonna check. I have this posted in a couple different areas. But like I said, if you just, um, like I said, fill out the application and I'll contact you right away or just message me directly and let me know that you're interested. And um, Kate, uh, Stephanie, did you wanna, um, did you, and I'll put the URL up here again for those uh, who don't have the chat box. Um, you guys wanna, um, is there anything else? I really appreciate you taking the time to, to join us. I'm glad the technology was working. Yeah. I'm just gonna check to see if there's any additional questions that I maybe missed, but did you guys wanna, anything you wanted to add? 
think so. I mean, I think for either of us, if anybody had questions that they wanted to ask, we're, I'm open to it. It's fairly easy enough to contact, I think, or find either of us on, mm -hmm. on the business group that people can post and ask or certainly private message us. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, thank you for mentioning that because, um, yeah, sometimes I do have, I'm just trying to see if there are any questions. Sometimes I do have um, people who uh, they're interested. I, you know what? I do have a couple of comments on a different site, so I'm going to look. Um, I do have people that um, ask. Uh, I do have people that ask if they can talk with one of the s graduates. Um, so yeah, you know, as you see, I'm sure I'm Kate and Stephanie. If you guys um, would like to reach out, or if you want to speak to, um, you know, one of my other um, other people in the program, and you want to hear their personal experiences, um, I do have people that are completely willing and uh, happy to speak with you. So thanks for mentioning that, Stephanie. All right. Okay, you guys, if there's any no questions. All right. So again, um, uh, if you uh, feel free to share this, if you're watching this, and if you think that there's uh, somebody that you know who might be interested, feel free to share the replay. And again, if the if you're watching this a few months later, um, and you're like, oh, you know, I missed enrollment, reach out to me, because like I said, I might get an opening available. Um, and I can definitely put you on a wait list. I already have a wait list for the next time I offer it. Um, also, um, I do have, um, um, oh, Angie's here. Yeah, Angie, if you want to, um, uh, I, I posted the link. Uh, if we've got people, if they want to listen, we have another person who graduated. Um, but um, um, Kate and Stephanie, I'm not going to keep you here all evening. So <laughs> I'll let you guys go. Thank you for joining us. And um, you guys, wait, I have a couple more minutes. So I'm going to let Kate and uh, Stephanie go. Angie might be joining us in just a second. Um, but uh, what I wanted to add was I have had business owners and, and, and trainers and um, people who sign up as a group. So if you are a business owner and you have um, other trainers that work for you and or you have other people as a part of your business and you're like, gosh, this would be good for, you know, two or three of people in my business to 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 learn this. Um, I do um, offer specialized programs. I will specialize and create programs for groups. And sometimes for those groups, one option is for me to come out and do face-to-face -face training with your group. So um, I, I, I did want to mention that, that um, I do specialize and I do give discounts if a group of multiple people want to go through the program. And um, whether you want to do it all virtual or if you want me to create an option for you where I can come out and travel to you and do face-to-face -face training, that is most definitely an option. Um, just let me know and, um, and we'll hook up a conversation. And I'm going to see... Oh, I was having some problems earlier with the technology. Angie, if you, um, here we go. I'm going to, I brought Stephanie back. <laughs> All right, I'm going to try. Um, Angie, I put a link uh, and make sure it says the guest link. If we can't get her on, then uh, we'll bring her on on another day. I, and uh, are there any, um, Sarah, thank you. Angie, Sarah's here. Um, I see Colleen's here. Um, Conchetta, thank you, thank you so much, you guys, for joining us. I don't see many questions, but maybe that's good. That meant that I uh, I answered your questions. Um, okay, Angie, the internet. No worries, Angie. Um, Angie said the internet's slow. We'll bring you on another day so um, people can share. Um, uh, you can ca uh, you can comment on the video streams. Okay, no worries. Um, we'll, you guys, I'll bring in um, other days. We'll have some other um, guest speakers on, on different tops, topics and stuff. But uh, thank you, Angie, for offering. Um, but again, if you guys are, um, if you're interested, just reach out. Let me know right away, especially if you want to get started um, sooner rather than later. I do have a couple spots left. And uh, sometimes the program is nearly full before I even make any public announcement. I didn't even open enrollment officially until just a few days ago. And I only have like two, three spots left. Um, so message me right away. So, all right, you guys, I am, I'm going to log off. Now listen again, if I missed your question, because sometimes they load slowly, I will come back and I'll reach out to you. So again, to download the uh, to download the brochure, it's tinyurl.com. It's the letter K, the number nine, uh, for canine fit, tinyurl.com slash canine fit. Uh, that's for the brochure. And then also, um, if you look in the discussion thread on uh, on Facebook where the original post is, I did put the application there. But again, just message me, just reach out. It's Erica Bowling. 
Um, and you can find me on a, a lot of different sites. You can also Google me, but uh, Facebook, you'll find me. And it is um, Northeast Canine Conditioning. Um, I am here live on my Facebook business page every Friday, 8.30 p.m. Eastern time. Sometimes we talk about fitness topics. Sometimes we talk about business topics. Sometimes we talk about both. So I'm happy to have you here and I'm open for other topics and conversations. And I hope to see some of you um, on our next Elite Canine Athlete, our, our group coaching session. And I will talk to you soon. Thank you so much for joining us. Bye-bye for now.